Hey, you see that little welder right there? Cheap, Timu. Look below the video and get a link to it. But one thing I'm going to do is find out whether this all powers, power station, ain't been good for much. We're going to see it with its 2,500 watt capabilities or claims of 2,500 watts and 4,000 watt capacity, 90% fully charged. We're going to see what it's going to do on this little welder. Now, as soon as we take a little break, I'm going to show you how I put this longer, heavier cable on here to get a little better response time out of it. We're going to go ahead and set it for a little past three, about right there. That should be about 2,200 watts. That's a pretty hell of a load, but can the all powers handle it? All right. So as soon as I hit an arc, I'm going to get her over here to where she can look at the watt meter on the all power. So she'll see the screen. Come on over here. All right. Here, don't look at the arc, huh? Power on, fans running. What did it do, Kara? It shut off. What was the watt peak? I couldn't see it. Did your phone see it? Yes. So, let's try it again. Wait for it to kick on. Fans running. Here we go. All right, what did it show you? I don't know. I was having my. 1,579 watts. Let's jack this thing up to four. Did it peek out? Yeah. All right. Guys, we're going to be right back. Looks like the all pirates ain't got the ball sort. And we're going to show you this thing in person. All right. Sitting out here in the shop with Ruby and Nina. Right, Nina? Whoa. There's them two girls, my little my little Laverne and Shirley. There's my Shirley and there's my Laverne. They are crazy. Um, sitting out here in the shop, I have the little welder that uh, I ran a lot of welding rod through this thing. Now, I did figure out the 530 seconds is the best rod for it. Uh, the 7014, 6013, 6011 were great because I was running some pretty good metal. But it's, it's negative lead. It's ground lead um, is horrible. Was horrible. Uh, was horrible. So today we have now become unburdened by what has been. What has been tiny has now literally been trumped with a much heavier cable. So. We have now gotten to stage hyper. So I'm going to lay this out here. Now, these are my bus bars I built for an RV. So there's a couple of RV bus bars here. And I'll lay this out on the floor next to Kira's garden shoes here. And there is the cable that was on it. Very poor, very thin, very tiny. And this is not easy to do. You have to get a special fitting to put this in. I'll show you why. But all the way up. All the way up. So I ended up three and a half times the length. And what was on it is technically seven gauge. I thought it was six. But it's about seven gauge. It's six mm squared. So about seven gauge. Now, a little heavier than eight. Internally, this thing is pretty simple. Boom. There you go. As you've seen in the thumbnail picture, naked and dressed, you know, that's the reason I did that. So, this thing uses heavy lifting MOSFETs inside of it. A big, big pair of those. Four total, actually. One, two, three, four. Down here at the bottom, where the power comes in, it uses a initial rectifier right here. So it's not that complicated of a build. 
course, it has its standard board control options and everything else. You can set the maximum potential right here. So this is your potentiometer and you can adjust your current right there or your voltage. I think actually, yes, that's that's current. So you can adjust your current and not a wise thing to do. Voltage, however, is set and it is set at 44 volts. That's what we've done figured out. Yours may differ. This model, 44 volts. DC. It is a inverter welder. Okay. So that might, might be what they're referring to. So it's, it's a quasi-DC welder. But little sucker works good. I mean, real good. So now this is where you have to get that cable and I put some high temperature adhesive around this because it is close to touching all kinds of stuff going up through there. And it secures right here to the joint heat sink. So you have your negative field that's in this heat sink all the way around. And it goes through all these different screws inside the board to make contact to that and then the rest of the board. And that's how you're getting your, your ground lead is off of that. So nice big long i don't know, I think it's going to fit in this case that much anymore now but heavy heavy plenty of cable and no more being burdened by a has-been you see all right so pretty simple i just want to kind of get in here and show you guys how this thing is made and hopefully nothing got screwed up and I'll get these little gaskets and this little steel plate, this little steel uh, protection face here or plate or whatever you want to call it. Uh, I'll get it put back on and we'll put it back together. Seems to be, it will not be a problem getting it back together. I did have to because of the slight increase in cable earth. I had to kind of grind this out a little bit right here so that when it goes down, it will fully close and we will have a functional welder. Now you're going to ask yourself, hey, why the hell did you do that? Well, I work on a lift a lot. Or if you want to plug in and crawl under a car, do you want to keep sliding your butt out, unhooking your ground cable, dragging it back further and keep, you know, do you really want to always do that? Sometimes it's hard to purchase a ground. Sometimes it's hard to find. Like if I'm working on this table, okay, I'll have a steel leg here and then a flat plate. Can't clip onto the flat plate, but I can clamp on the steel leg. So what if I want to go all the way down here and work on something out here? Well, that welder, it wasn't going to go. Three and a half, four feet, I guess. What was that? Four and a half. I think it's four and a half feet. 1.25 meters. Damn, wasn't long enough. There you go. So now I can set the generator on top of the telehandler, which is a big lift, like a huge extension lift. I can set it on the telehandler, telehandler run a single 25-foot cord, power cord, and then clip this off on my work and as i go back and forth i don't have to stop go all the way back unclip move down find another good spot i can just now have about 15 feet of play and that was the whole plan the whole plan was to make this functional so we're going to take it outside and i'm going to plug it in and we're going to see eh, does it still work let's go with it All right, so it's back outside, and as you saw in the very beginning of the video, the all powers right over here. It's got the balls of a steer. Seems to be uh, <laughs> no contende. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to show a basic thing that you're going to commonly use one of these welders for, and it'd be like this, just putting a bolt on. So let's kick the power on. You hear the fan kick on. That's that fan you saw in the back. Pulls a lot of air through here. I'm going to pop my hood down, so it's, I'm going to sound a little bit off but the basic use of this would be for doing things like adding a bolt or adding a repair to a job So say you and your kid, you're working on a go-kart, 
And this is the job you got to do. Go ahead and turn this thing off. And that's just one of the little 16, 6011 rods I used on there because I've got eighth inch plate and a bolt. So let me get over here and I'll get a little old tool. You can see it lays a decent weld. It's not horrible. I didn't do a full weld on it. I just want to show you that it's got the balls to do it. More, a lot more balls than that all powers. And my 5,000 watt inverter had a hell of a lot more balls than this thing does. It fell over. That's all right. So let's go ahead and take that off. And you can see here, not a weak weld. So we'll get a little close up on that weld, sis. Yep. Pretty decent weld, see? So when you look at the fill and the ease of the heat to get in, it's full penetration. And on over that. here is a nice is a nice weld. And well, this is a practice weld right here. <laughs> I'm welding a I'm welding a uh you're, you're a welding a yeah on the top of that. But this is a previous weld here, as you've seen in the beginning of the video. So it lays a pretty decent weld. Now, for the money, 80 bucks, 60 bucks, whatever it is on T Move, it's worth buying. Having one of them around when you need it is a good investment. Yeah, thumb up. Thumbs up for that. Yeah. All right, guys. Y'all like, subscribe, share it with a friend. There's always somebody that needs an easy way to do this. And yeah, the shorter cord works, the shorter ground works. If, you know, you got a set of jumper cables, you want to extend them that way. But I just didn't like that. Not for what I use it for. All right. Y'all be good.